Well, hello again, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike, and do yourself a favor if you haven't already. Go ahead and hit that subscription button. It's, it's right there. And while you're there, get your bell on. Click that little bell so you're notified when I make new videos. Today, I want to look at some things that aren't radios, but radio-related. I want to look at some test equipment type stuff. And not even really just test equipment, just useful things to have in the shack. Stick around. Thank you! So what do we have here? We've got a few things that I've kind of been wanting for quite a while because uh, as I've gotten more radios, I've always needed to reconfigure things and take the shack apart and just to just to test things and see what they're doing, where stuff is at, and all that kind of stuff. My friends at MFJ hooked me up with these things. Um, the first thing here, this is the MFJ 849. This is an HF through uh, UHF watt meter and SWR meter, basically. It's got two antenna ports, two radio ports, so you can have two radios plugged into this thing at once, and all you do is flip this switch, so if you want to transmit on HF, now it's on HF, you'll see what's going on there. The other side just goes into bypass. You don't have to worry about, you know, frying out your VHF, UHF radio, and then same thing, click over to VHF, UHF, and that'll bypass so you can see what your SWR is on your VHF antenna, how much power you're putting out, all that kind of stuff. Which, for me, I wanted this more for VHF and UHF because I really don't like the fact that uh, those types of radios don't have an SWR meter, and uh, you really have no idea how much wattage you're putting out either just because you get a little bar and that that doesn't re really mean anything. I want to know I want to know what it's doing. The second thing is a good antenna switch. This is the MFJ2704. Um I got to tell you when I took this thing out of the box, this thing is beefy. There is some serious serious weight to this thing. It's got gold plated connectors inside. Really really quality connector. I I have an antenna switch, but it's really old. It was a hand-me-down from, from one of my dad's friends who's a hammy gave it to me, which was really nice, but I really wanted something that was that was actually really good. So we got this. I usually just plug my antenna in here and then I'll like A, B different radios. That's really one of the main reasons I have this. Or if I have different radios hooked up, you know, maybe I want to transmit on one radio and, you know, whatever. So um, now I have four that I can play with. And lastly, and certainly not least, is a dummy load. This is the MFJ264. This does uh, all the way up to, this does one megahertz, all the way up to 650 megahertz. There's a power curve on the back there, so you can see how long you can transmit on each band before you start seeing that magic smoke. So these three things in combination are really just gonna help me, or anyone, experiment, Learn what your radios are doing. Learn what your antennas are doing. See, you know, you could see your coax loss. All kinds of stuff. Just by having a few pieces of kit in your radio shack. Let's kind of hook all this stuff up and play with it and, and really kind of show you the purpose of, of wanting all these things. Let's take a quick look at the MFJ849. But before we do... Oh, yeah. So... Real quick, 1.6 to 525 megahertz, 200 watt. This is like a three and a half inch display. Really nice size. I like the backlit, the kind of amber glow of it. Very, very easy to read. Easy toggle switch here. If you if you want to see what you're doing on HF, you flip it on HF. You want VHF, UHF, you flip it over. And like I said, you can have both radios hooked in at the same time. And whatever you're not using, it's just gonna it's just going to bypass it. And you can still, even if I was using my VHF, UHF radio, I could still transmit on HF and it wouldn't affect anything. So that's really cool. Taking a look at the back, you can see the top two are uh, where we hook our transmitters up to. So this side is for uh, 125 to 525 megahertz. This is for one point, I can't read, 1.6 to 60 megahertz. So your transmitter goes in here, your antenna goes there. And then your RF goes out and you make all kinds of contacts. Here's a look at the dummy load. It doesn't really do much. It just sits there. <laughs> and uh, it does what you need to do when you need to do it. So 
Uh, the this is the MFJ two sixty four. Your one megahertz to sixty mega six hundred and fifty megahertz. Excuse me, one and a half kilowatts HF to UHF. And I would really have this thing turned around so that side is pointing at you. And here we can see our curve. So if you're running fifteen hundred watts, this is in seconds down here. You can transmit for ten seconds at fifteen hundred watts, and then all the way down to six hundred seconds at hundred megahertz. So you can pretty much just lay on this thing. And it's really, it's just a big, uh, it's like a big resistor in here, basically. Um, but it's its pretty lightweight. It's not horribly big. It's probably, I don't know, eight inches or so by maybe two inches by two inches. So something you can just kind of throw off in the side of the shack somewhere, run a, a wire to it, and then flip your antenna switch over to when you want to use a dummy load. And that brings us to the MFJ2704. This is one of their Rhino antenna switches. And when I say this thing is beefy, man, I mean, this thing This thing probably weighs a pound and a half, two pounds. I mean, it is just solid, thick metal. You've got uh, really nice quality connectors in here. Now, I opted for all SO239s. There are different variants of this that you can get. So if you want end connectors on here or a couple ends, a couple uh, SO239s, you can do that. Obviously your four-way switch. Looking at the back, look at how thick this is. It's crazy. It's got nice rubber feet to keep it from sliding and, and marring up stuff. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed. When I first took this out of the box, just holding it, I was like, holy crap. This thing is, uh, if you drop this on your foot, it would probably break your toe. This thing is really, really cool. So how's that for making a mess, huh? But here's a basic configuration of kind of what I do but more difficult because I didn't have these things. I want to compare different radios. I want to know what's going on. I want to see my SWR. I want to see what the power is actually outputting regardless of what the screens may tell you. I've got all three radios hooked up to the uh, switch here. The G90 is on one, the RS918 is on two, and the X5105 is on three. I've got them all set to the same frequency, 7.175. I've got them all set to five watts. I've got my uh, J38 key here. We're just gonna key down and uh, see what we get. The G90 on five watts CW. We're gonna check over here. We're on HF right now, left is HF. And we're gonna see what our power is. So there you go. Flat SWR, putting out five watts, a real five watts, so that's cool. Now I'm gonna switch over to the RS918, see what that does. So this is set to put out five watts again. Let's key up, see what we get. Oh, look at that, eight. Blowing up the front ends of my radios here though because they're sitting on top of one another. So I'm not gonna key down for very long. On five watts, you get eight watts. I mean, this, this radio is really, it's a really neat radio, but it's a copy. It's a Chinese copy of a of a, a European guy, I believe, kind of came up with the software for that. So this thing's all over the place, but I still I still like it a lot. So eight watts on five watts on the RS918, and let's see what the X5105 gets us. And third time's a charm, the X5105 on 7.175 CW puts out 7.7 watts, an overachiever. You gotta love that. But wait, there's more. So do you want to test how much power your cheap Chinese radio is putting out? This is the Bofang GT3TP, advertised as an 8-watt radio. Uh, right now, you can see at the very top here, home cycling, HML. So that's low power. So let's see what we get on low power. About 1 and a quarter, 1.2 watts there on low. Now let's go to medium. That's supposed to be, I think, 5 watts. Hey, guess what? It's not. 4.3 and let's go high power this is supposed to be 8 watts oh darn look at that Bofang doesn't uh, add up 6 watts here if we want to see what our Yesu does right now it's on L1 right there which is supposed to be the lowest power setting and well there it is keying up nothing <laughs> that's kind of odd let's go to L2 Get about 0.37 watts. L3, this is supposed to have four, 3.6. And then when there's no, when there's no, when there's nothing there, that's supposed to be high power. 
3.6. So L3 and high are the same thing and L1 does nothing. So, but I'm pretty sure this is a four watt radio. And uh, this battery is super old, but thanks for the radio, Dad. So that's pretty neat. It's, you know, I always want to know what my HTs are doing, you know, what they're capable of, because they're always advertised as something. Let's try this Islands HD1. This is supposed to be a 10 watt radio. We're on low power, you can see. Let's see what that gives us. 0.7 watts, which is actually good if you're trying to do DMR uh, into a hot spot. We'll go to medium power, two and a half watts. Not looking good. Again, this is supposed to be a 10 watt radio. High power, 6.59 out of a 10 watt radio. So there you go. So here's kind of my typical setup when I'm running HF. I don't have the dummy load hooked up in line because I have my setup. I've only got one HF antenna outside. So I basically feed the antenna to the antenna switch and then I'll use the switches to go back and forth between different radios. So for example, I've only got one other radio hooked up right now, but it's going from here, into here, into here, and then um, to this radio. So if I want to AB something and, and compare different radios, all I have to do is throw this switch. Now you can see the waterfall is dead there because this radio is receiving now. I've got two extra ports. Now I can play with all kinds of stuff. Um, if I want to kind of reverse it and have a bunch of different radios come into the dummy load, I would basically just reverse my configuration with the antenna switch and uh, go to town and I can hook up four different uh, radios to the dummy load and, and kind of test things out that way. So pretty neat setup. So just real quick, wanted to show operating both of these radios through that. Everything's plugged in. So on 14652, I'm on high power, supposed to be a 50 watt radio. So let's key up real quick. 47, uh, 47 watts out. Okay, I'm already testing and clear. And you get to see your SWR, which is fantastic. Let's do that again. 1.12. So that's cool. Now all we have to do is flip our switch over on HF. Notice nothing happened over here. So I found a clear frequency uh, in the CW band. So let's see, I'm on, this says 95%. So theoretically we'll get 95 Watts out and we get a hundred. So thanks ICOM. That's awesome. And sign. So anyway, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I just wanted to share these toys with you because there's, there's so many things in the amateur radio hobby that, that I like to experiment, and I'm sure all of us do, and having the right gear, the right tools uh, to allow us to explore and be creative um, are kind of essential things. It's not all just about radio and antenna, although for me it mostly is, but it's good to have a, a bit of a test kit, we'll call it. So anyway, I will have links in the description to all of these things. Thank you, Richard and everyone at MFJ for allowing me to play with these, I appreciate it. And thanks so much for watching another episode of K&MRD Radio Stuff.